I want to explore the very basics and necessities of just the plain gospel of what you and I need to know that makes us right with God, that you can have a satisfaction. By the way, we'll never be satisfied with our present state. Doesn't sin sometimes freak you out? And it makes you angry. Why did I do that? And you, you know, again, Romans 7, read that. It just, Paul just freaks out. He says, this is what sin does. This is what sin does to us. So if you're in that boat, I'm in the same boat. I get mad at myself when I sin. The gospel on vogue or in vogue, what does that mean? The fashionable gospel preached today. This is what you will hear within the greater mainstream church teaching, um, and it's in vogue, or the correct pronunciation, en vogue, it's a French word. And that includes the social gospel, a gospel that is popular to the itching ears of society. I spoke to a guy, I'll never forget, I was young, still at college, and he was, he was a church guy and everything, but he could not get across his mind that sleeping with his neighbor's wife was wrong. So that's what we push into the church today. It's in vogue. You need to be satisfied. You, you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be offended by God's word. It's a social gospel. We need to adapt God's word to society. What's the needs of society? Well, the needs of society today are it's sin. We, we are inherently bent towards sin. We, that which we want to do and that which God wants us to do are two opposing. They're polarized. They really are. And so it's popular to the itching ears of society, especially, especially the, and I've used this word over and over, the pseudo-Christian society. It is a gospel that today holds forth a false hope to sinners. It's a false hope. There's a gospel out there that people are clinging to, but it's false. And it gives them a false hope because Jesus loves you no matter what. Do whatever thou wilt. Alistair Crowley coined the word, do as thou wilt. Just do it. Do as thou wilt. Jesus loves you. And that is, I'm telling you, the mainstream gospel. Just switch on TBN. It promises them that they can have eternal life. It promises the, 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 the church or the kind of seeker. It promises you eternal life. Yet, you can continue in your sins and your rebellion against God. Jesus is a nice guy. He's come to save. So you grab onto that. But you defer. You delay. That if he's my savior, I belong to him. I cannot tell you how many times in the gospel it mentions you are a slave. It's a, it's a horrible word. It's a revolting word. We've, we've been freed from slavery. We've seen what slavery does. But Jesus says, no, you are my slave. There's no other way to put it. You're my slave. But no longer do I call you slave, but I call you friends because you obey what I'm saying. So therefore, it is just basic teaching when you received me you saw me as Lord and when you obey me I change you and we become this friendship that if God has given you if the Father has given you into my hands no man no demon no devil can snatch you away it promises salvation as I said from hell but it doesn't promise you Salvation from your iniquity. It, no one wants to go to hell. In fact, that's a word that's not even mentioned in churches these days. No one. It's actually it's on par with race, racist speech, hate speech. You don't want to mention it. So we want to go to heaven, but we want to revel in our sins. It's insidious. It's demonic. It's just easy to believe. Just believe. That, 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 I mean, the, the gospel say, believe in the Lord your God. Believe in Christ, you and your household shall be saved. Oh, well, that's the book of Acts. Now, again, I say this. We're not meant to conform. We're meant to be transformed. God changes our hearts. And He sanctifies us within. If that cheap grace, and you can just wallow in your sin, it will feed. I told my wife this morning, you all know this is axiomatic. This is a truism. If you get told a lie enough, or you say... Speak a lie enough, you will begin to believe that lie. I mean, that is a truism. We know that. That is true to us. You can fool yourself. It's a delusion. Therefore, it's a delusion to think that you can get into heaven and live the way you want to. Heaven's not the goal, family. God is the goal. 
Heaven is just the, the place we end up. But no one seeks after God, no, not even one, Psalm 14. No one does right, says Romans 3. So we want to go to heaven, but we want to live the way we want to. That's why Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. It's, it's light, except just place your trust in me and I will carry you. I will build you. I will regenerate you. I will refresh you. I will wash you. I will sanctify you. Take my burden. It's light. Where I'm going, I'm paying for, 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 for the sins of the world from past, present, and future. And we miss it. That's a very fundamental, basic teaching of Scripture. That when we submit to Him, we therefore belong to Him. You are not your own. You have been brought at a price, says the book of Corinthians. You do not belong to yourself if you're a Christian. Pastors sleeping with the congregation. Pastors asking the congregation woman to come to church with no panties on so that he might touch their private past to get the demons out. How about that? And people fall for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Hook, line, it's, uh, come on. That's the church. But I specifically think about the church in Africa, deep, dark Africa. We, I think, are the pioneers, the world-leading pioneers to incorporate demonic activity into the church. What does Christ have to do with Belial, says the Bible? The, they are equally yoked. So whenever we bring the world into the church, you're going to get a worldly church that looks exactly like the world. But you have been set apart. Why do we think the Bible says, be holy as I'm holy? I mean, that's an impossibility, straight away. God says this to Israel in the book of Exodus. Be holy as I'm holy. And we think, yo, that's impossible. What he's saying is he says, the word holy means to separate yourself. You'll never be like me. You'll never be like Jesus. You aren't Jesus. But you need that word holy means it's a special consecration. I am a special being. I transcend time. But you as a mere mortal, be holy. Separate yourself from those things of the world. That's the basic, basic teaching of the scripture. And it's a volitional thing. I want to do this. Not to outshine my neighbor, but the king of heaven has bought me at a price. Think about it. Think about it. I really want you to think about it. And I don't want you to judge whoever you're seeing outside. But think about it just in those terms. How in the world do you think that Jesus Christ goes to the cross and pays for the sins of the world? That that payment would not change people. It has to change. If you, by the wrath of God, propitiation has been poured out on Christ Jesus, it is not a scot-free thing. It is to change those so we might become separated from the world. That's why the book of Romans says, do not be conformed, but be transformed. You are holy. You are not super. You're not a saint. By the way, the Bible alludes to saints. Do you know what that means? I mean, today the church has venerated them. St. John and St. Joseph and St. James and all those things. They've put them to a place of deity. But that word saints in the Bible is a very, very simple word. It means holy one separated. God's working with you. You've dedicated your life to him. That's what it means. That's the simple meaning of when the Bible calls the church the saints of God. Because they are separate. As God is separated from sin. So he has separated you from this world because you are his. Do you, do you see that? It's a basic teaching.